Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Things We Know. I'm Lisa Callahan. And I'm Carrie Morin. And today we have a guest I'm so excited about both the topic, but especially the guest because I adore her. It's Sama Balbaki here to talk among a few important topics about her successful work with women around healing, their binge eating, their good girl trauma, and all that goes with it. I am so excited because I, Sama, I don't know if you know, but I spent 14 years in the weight loss industry. And so the idea around binge eating and good girl trauma, this is just such an important topic. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. I'm very excited to talk about it too. Thanks for, thanks for that. Yay. So I get the pleasure of sharing a little bit about Sama. Uh, Sama is a former food scientist turned binge eating coach and her journey, um, his journey from battling her own binge eating and emotional eating struggles to becoming that guiding light for others has been so remarkable. And it was through her self-discovery that she unveiled the true root of her own struggles. And that was a dysregulated nervous system fueled by years of what she calls good girl trauma as an empath and a people pleaser. Ooh, so relatable. Yeah, no kidding. So realizing this deep connection between good girl trauma, empathetic, um, people pleasing tendencies and binge eating, Sama underwent a personal transformation and ex is excited to support women facing similar struggles. She pursued her studies to become a master transformational and inner healing coach. And now as a binge eating coach, Sama helps women worldwide to break the cycles of generational trauma, societal expectations, and finally overcome the cycle of binge and emotional eating. Mm. Yes. So impressive. So I've had the pleasure of knowing Sama for, we just figured out about five years already. That's wow, incredible. Crazy. I'm first as her coach, but I mean, mainly as her admirer and uh, <laughs> watching you create something special that has helped so many women while navigating parenting your beautiful young boy and now a precious new baby girl. And you do it with so much grace and humor. So Sama, thank you. Thank you for making time to be here with us with such a little, <laughs> such a new little one at home. I know I'm so lucky. I have such a supportive husband. <laughs> um, thank you so much for that beautiful intro. Uh, I'm really excited to, to share. Yay. Yeah. So I love what you wrote on our guest form around empowering women to heal their good girl trauma, which is often the root cause of their relationship to their food and their body. And if you can heal that, it really is the key to a vibrant and successful life. I agree a hundred percent. So can you just start by telling us what led you to want to address this? Absolutely. So I actually had my own struggles with binge and emotional eating. And since I was a little girl, um, I was put on diets, diet after diet after diet. I had a weight loss issue, apparently, <laughs> as you obviously relate. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, so my entire journey, I always thought that, you know, I just needed to lose weight. I just had to have more willpower and more self-control. And, um, you know, after having tried so many things years and years later, what I realized is that it actually had nothing to do with food, um, nothing to do with, with, you know, my weight, it was everything else. So everything mm -hmm. emotional, my childhood, the way that I was brought up. And, um, what I realized is that I actually had something called good girl trauma, um, and that's what I, you know, what Carrie was saying that, that I talk about because basically, and I think you ladies might relate as well, is that when we grew up as millennials and Gen Xers and, uh, you know, not Gen Z for sure, <laughs> um, we have this, this expectation that we needed to be sweet, polite little girls and that somehow we needed to look a certain way and be a certain way. And I remember looking through magazines and you know, like, I wish that I could look like this beautiful model um, magazines. We don't do that anymore, but <laughs> we did back then. Um, and, you know, what I realized is that that played such a huge role in my relationship to my body and myself and the way that I saw myself, my own beliefs about how I felt like I was never enough, whether it was myself or my body and my looks. Um, and, you know, I was always told, oh, you're, you're such a pretty face. If you could just lose some weight. Yeah. That oh, stuck with me. <laughs> I have so many problems with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it, it's traumatizing. I think we don't mm -hmm. realize that it's traumatizing, but on some level it really is. Well, it's um, like death by a thousand paper cuts, right? Like you just keep, to, and you're, and you're being told it from people that love you, you know? And so it's, it's so 
it's microaggressions. And it feels conditional too. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like, if you look this way, then I will love you better somehow. Right. It feel, it feels like that. Um, and so what ends up happening, what ended up happening is that because I grew up with this idea that I needed to be this good girl, I became a people pleaser and mm. empathic. And, you know, um, I never learned how to regulate my emotions. And I think you ladies could probably re relate to that as well. Our generations never really learned how to process our emotions and, and know what our needs are because we're kind of told like, oh, you have to um, take care of everybody else, right? And you you come last. So all to say, I, I realized that over time is that what I really needed to do was learn how to process my emotions. And then once I knew how to do that and regulate my nervous system, then I eventually stopped binge eating because that was just a natural byproduct of all of that work. I love that, that it, you didn't seek to quit the binge eating, that was like the unexpected outcome, which is the perfect way for that to happen. Exactly. Naturally, oh. unintentionally. Yeah. Love it. Mm. Um, can you say more about good girl trauma, the people pleasing piece? Cause I think, I mean, I, I will say more about this in a little bit, I, but I just think that you are more of a unique voice about this than, than a lot that's out there for people who are looking for help with binge eating and um, emotional eating. So can you say more about that? Like, uh, how that, how that becomes like, how does people pleasing get you to a place where that's all you can do, or that's like, that feels like all you could do. You mean like with binge eating that people pleasing leads directly to binge eating? Yeah. Well, you know, what ends up happening is that I find when you're a people pleaser, you, you take care of other people's emotions. Like you're trying to manage their emotions. Cause you, that's all you knew growing up. Right that you had to have no boundaries. You had to allow other people to cross your boundaries in order to feel accepted, in order to feel loved. You can't say no to anybody or risk disappointing them. And so and so you end up kind of um, holding that in and not being able to regulate that, not being able to regulate the, your emotions around that. And you burn out. Right. Um, you burn out because you're taking care of other people that you no longer know how to take care of yourself. Mm hmm. Oh, Ooh, so yeah. much. It's it's the and you and I've talked about this a lot, but it's the like we all have basic needs, you know, mm -hmm. for love, safety and belonging. And when you're raised to tend to those for others. And there's no room for your own. That's one of the like that's that's one of many avoidant numbing things you can do to meet your needs. Right. It's just like I, I need to come right that. Right. The food becomes how you need that. It just becomes a way to numb your emotions to, to, to avoid them because it's, it's avoid avoiding behavior, right? People pleasing is a way to avoid conflict, mm -hmm. um, to avoid disappointing people and right. to feel accepted. Right. Right. And then, and it, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so then you need that kind of, um, it, it, the avoidance pattern just continues. It reflects in your relationship to food, right? You need an escape, a way to numb your emotions and, feed your unmet needs, basically, basically literally feeding your unmet needs. Right. And if you decide to disrupt that and say, no, 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 my needs, I have needs here, then you're not a good girl anymore. It's, um, you know, it sounds like, oh, well, now you're being difficult <laughs> or needy or something. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That you, you want to keep that good girl image. And I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of women, choose food I feel in in some way that it's like that good girl uh uh drug <laughs> if I can say this on a pod podcast I'm not sure but yeah. you can say way. anything here yeah <laughs> <laughs> that it's 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 a good girl drug right we we're not bad girls we're not going to go towards the alcohol or the drugs that the people see as these you know these bad things quote unquote um so food is a way for us to still keep that that image, I think. Well, and it also is the moment where it, like drugs or alcohol, it does in the moment make you feel better, mm -hmm. you know, so that avoidant energy, you know, and, and there's some part of you that knows uh, I should, I should be taking care of myself. But right now, I mean, comfort food is comfort food for a reason. It physically does make you feel better until you're done and you don't feel better anymore. Mm -hmm. And right. then it's just the next spiral down. The, the oxytocin hits like when you reach for mm -hmm. your favorite thing, like the sound of the bag, the crunch, you know, like the, the, the texture or something. Yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely. We were actually just talking about this. I, I had a the peace process uh, coaching call 
a couple hours ago and we were actually talking about how it becomes this cycle of comfort, but then guilt and shame. And then you eat more because it's like, what am I going to do with that guilt and shame? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like any addiction. I mean, that's every addiction is that you, if you feel you got the high and then low, and then you grab onto it to get the high again. And it Absolutely. just spirals. Right. One of your, I love all your videos. One of your videos that I, that, that has run again recently or, or has been on my you know, feed is that one where you're acting out what it looks like to get caught or to have someone come home while you're in like a binge. Mm. And it reminds me that like anything can be an addiction. If when someone else sees you doing it, you feel shame or you try to hide it. Right. Yep. And, and that's, you know, it was like, put it away, sit back down and look like you're typing or yeah. Totally. I was the biggest secret eater. <laughs> And it's, it's interesting because I feel, again, nothing to do with food. Like you said, it could be anything because at the end of the day, it's, it's what are you actually hiding? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I think it's interesting because, you know, I was never someone, I, I was never a, a binge eater, but I definitely had moments where, you know, I buy something at the grocery and eat it in the car and throw it, you know, so I think there's also levels like as we're listening, as women are listening to this, I don't want them to think, oh, I was never a binge eater. So this doesn't apply to me. Mm. You know, it, it apply. There's lots of ways of looking at the way your relationship with food masks, mm. whatever you've grown up, what, what the traumas that you're holding on to. Mm. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. I mean, and I think this is what a lot of people I think are, are interested in is knowing, well, you know, is, is that really traumatic, right? Like, was it really traumatic? Because we think of trauma as like these big things that, that happen. And yes, absolutely. But there's also how we reacted to what happened. And it could have been just that one thing, like I was saying, oh, you, you could, you know, you would be so beautiful or so pretty if you could just lose some weight. Right. Mm -hmm. That yeah. sticks with you. And that's that it is. It's it's trauma. And you say oh, no question. You say often, which is just kind of hitting me on many levels, especially because Lisa and I just had a retreat where this this kind of thing came up. But you say often it, it's trauma can be what didn't happen for you. Mm -hmm. And to feel like there's parts of you that aren't lovable is trauma. Right. Oh, and yeah. and to feel like if people saw me doing this or knew this part of me, they wouldn't love me. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, it, it really is, you know, not trusting that all your parts are lovable. Totally, totally, totally. And, and, and how healing is it, right? When you realize that, that there are different parts of you that we can speak to and, 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 and teach and um, start to change our beliefs about ourselves that no, I am lovable, right? I mean, there's just so much freedom on the other side of this. I know we're talking about a lot about like the, <laughs> the actual bad side, but I mean, there's so much freedom from actually he healing from all of this as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, Carrie's already referenced the fact that you do TikToks and, and you're, it feels like you're really reaching a lot of women through social media with TikToks and reels. Um, and so your own story must be resonating with your growing audience. Like what kind of reflections are you hearing back? Oh my goodness. It's, it's so fun. <laughs> I mean, it's sad, but fun to right. listen to how, you know, every single weekly coaching call that we have ladies will, you know, the new ladies, Oh my goodness, your videos. It's crazy how much you're, it's like, you're speaking exactly to me, directly to me that this was, this was me. And it's crazy for me that ladies from literally all around the world. I mean, I'm talking like France, Germany, South Africa, like it's, it's insane. And we all come together and we've all lived the same childhood. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, but what a beautiful thing, right. To, to all be able to relate and to heal together. Mm. Well, and you, as you're healing the adult women, they're then able to reflect that and model that for their daughters. Like for me, when I was in the diet industry, I really thought I was doing the right thing by having it, what I thought was a healthy relationship with food and modeling that for my daughter. And, you know, she did for the most, but then you reach a point where you're paying more attention to social media than your mom, you know, and for us, it was magazines, but social media is I think worse, right? Because the yeah. way you can filter things, everybody can filter. Um, and so, you know, for you to be able to support mothers and and grandmothers and aunts and all that sort of thing so that they can then lift their daughters up 
oh, what if you, you know, your piece in breaking this pattern is so phenomenal and important and just so grateful for that. Absolutely. I, I just got goosebumps as, as you're speaking, because it's so true. And, and now that I have a daughter, I, yeah. I, you know, I have such an important role, you know, and it's true. It, it's, it's really breaking generational cycles. Yeah. I think this is another piece that's, that's different that when people see these, you know, I have like those mother daughter videos. I don't know if you've yeah, noticed they're awesome. that. Um, that speaks to people because I think that we realize like, oh, this voice inside of my head isn't really my voice. This is, you know, the voice of my mother and not to blame those generations, absolutely not right. to blame it, but to be aware of and realize that, you know, okay, fine. This is where it comes from. Great. Now I can heal. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's such a beautiful uh, experience to now have a daughter and be like, all right, now I get to do this for myself too, <laughs> for my daughter. Yeah. Well, and again, I mean, having had a daughter and have her, you know, she, I started, um, gosh, I started working for Weight Watchers before she was even born. So she was going, even my son was going with me to Weight Watcher meetings before uh, she was born. And I tried so hard to really show her that I ate dessert and I had wine and no food was off limits. And I think I told the story back a year ago, but I unfortunately one time she went with me and I had gained or something when I got on the scale and I literally lost it. And we walked out the door and she said, and she was like, God, she was like six. And she said, does this mean you don't love yourself anymore? Mm. I mean, it's still, I mean, every hair I'm like, <laughs> as I say it. And, and, and then I watched her and I watched Liam still struggle around their looks and, and so forth. And so I realized that while I'm a piece of it, I don't have all all the control over it. And and so I had to let go of any shame I felt around whatever Charlotte went through uh, or Liam went through around body dysmorphia, you know, but I still held strong in my beliefs and my support of them. So I'm I'm inviting you to do that as well. Since you just have a tiny, tiny baby to not feel any guilt if she doesn't totally fall in line, even though she's grown up with a mom like you. It we don't have all the control, unfortunately. We, we don't, we don't. And I, I definitely don't even claim to be perfect at this. Right. I mean, I, I'm a binge eating coach and I heal, you know, help, help heal, uh, you know, the good girl trauma and the binge eating and, and the weight loss and all that. And I am not perfect. Yeah. Right? Uh, nobody, nobody, is. nobody wants a perfect coach. At least no. coach right. I always <laughs> say we're just chapters ahead in the same book. Um, That's right. This brings up a couple of things for me because you just mentioned that you have a great relationship with your mom and you have had people who follow you say like, why are you blaming the parents? Can you share about that? Because I think it's it's so great. I mean, you're one of the first people out, like there's a lot now currently out there about understanding what it means to have had emotionally immature parents. Doesn't mean they're intellectually immature. Doesn't mean they're not even socially mature, like, or professionally mature, but emotionally immature because they, they just weren't given those tools. Absolutely. I, I can't even tell you the number of, um, what are they called? Haters in the, in the comments, but that's okay. I know when I have the haters, I know that this it's good because yes. this is the discussion, right? This is the discussion. So absolutely. People will say, you know, oh, all you do is blame, take accountability for your own actions. Right. And the truth is, is that um, we absolutely don't blame our parents for, for or caregivers for what they did or didn't do. The idea is that we want to understand where this generational trauma came from. It definitely didn't start with our parents. Right. right? It came from generations and generations before. But um, again, not to blame, but, you know, that's just kind of how society was. Right. Women were taught that we needed to be beautiful for men right? That we needed to be skinny for men, right? And so, and we needed to do everything <laughs> for, for, for everybody else. So all of that is just those, you know, brain wiring yeah. and conditioning. And so we just want to understand it so that we can finally break the cycle and heal our children. Mm. Love and their children. And their children. Right. And I, I do want to ask something else, but before I do, I just want to take this second to say you too for anyone who does have a business out there, a coaching business or otherwise, like you two 
are successful in social media because you're so real, both of you, Lisa and Sama. So, I mean, I, I think that you're great examples of being really transparent on social media in a way that's, that's making a difference for people. So I'll say Thank that. You. Thanks. That. Um, <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> so like as three women who have been trained as health coaches, and we've, we've seen all the programs out there, all the offerings, whether we've done it or people we know have done it. And Samai, you'll remember this, I think, because I was so infuriated and I forwarded it to you. We've seen a lot of tips and programs out there to help people, you know, um, kick binge eating and snacking. And it's always, always, and really reputable sources, I won't name them directly, but that are giving you distractions. Drink mm -hmm. some water. You're not hungry. Go for a walk. Fold fucking laundry. <laughs> Yeah, like, these are things that are on beautiful PDFs that they want you to download and put up as corrective behavior when really what it's doing is it's giving you ideas of avoidant behavior to correct an avoidant behavior. And none of it's about like understanding where it's coming from or loving that part of you. So, you know, did you did did you, like is, is this like what you think might be your secret to success here is that you're slotting in where nobody was saying that. Yeah, absolutely. I do believe that because I think that, you know, um, a lot of programs out there will teach you tools that at the end of the day are just replacing your, your, you know, abuse or whatever you call it. Um, because we really do need to understand the why behind the why behind the why behind our behavior. And um, if we don't do that, and what most programs end up doing is that they just keep on signing these people on again and again, like Weight Watchers, because you mm -hmm. don't do the root of your relationship to food, you're just replacing and with a more avoidant behavior, like you said. So I do think that when people see my content online, is that they're like, oh, you know, this is actually the missing piece here, because it is the missing piece <laughs> that, you know, this is, this is more about understanding the behavior so that we can heal from it, not just looking for replacements, which I think seems easier in a way, but it's not, it's harder. You know, it's interesting because I also think what's fantastic about your timing is that when I was at Weight Watchers, um, I wanna say around, I left in 2017, so maybe 2015, they, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to take that back. It was like 2016, 2017, because there was a moment in time where I thought, God, are they connected to the health coaches? Because what I was learning as a coach was so reflective of what Weight Watchers was trying to do. It wasn't in the meeting, but it was these extra things they were doing where we were talking more about root causes and the emotional aspect and the psychological aspect. And it went over like a lead balloon. People really wanted just to come in for the most part. I mean, you know, there was obviously, there's always a, a balance, but they wanted to know what a point of something was and how many they could eat. And that was it. Like they didn't really want to go into it. And I just think we've come a long way in the last, let's say 10 years into understanding that weight loss and, and, and healthy weight management and, and fixing your relationship with food isn't just about the food piece. So I'm, again, I feel like I'm so glad you're out there with that's, the rallying fl flag. That's interesting. Cause it makes me wonder if Gen Z brought that up for us, like, like Pam. Oh, I think so. Bit. Like, because you're right. Our generation, when I first started this like 10 years ago, people were like, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what yep. to do. They did not want to go through any sort of understanding. They just wanted, and, and I think I remember even being that way at certain points, just, just tell me what to do to get the results I want. Yeah. So, um, uh -huh. That yeah. quick fix, right? It's, yeah. it's that quick fix. And I think it, it's normal. I think it's, it's kind of human behavior. We just want that quick fix. We want to finish. We want to lose the weight tomorrow or yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, Cause then we'll be happy. Sorry. Cause then we'll be happy. Yes, mm. exactly. It's that, we have, you know, conditional love on ourselves, right. Mm -hmm. As well. And so, yeah, I, I definitely think that there's this new um, trend of breaking generational trauma. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you tell us more about the peace process? I love the name. So can you just dig into that a little bit for us? Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the peace process really is um, about making peace, right? Mm -hmm. With food and your body. And I think that's, uh, before I get into it, I think that's one of the things I think that also sets it apart is that we often think we have to fight mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to, to get better or whatever, but actually at the end of the day, we really need to make peace with yeah. ourselves, with our path, 
with food in our body. Um, so the peace process is it's an, it's an online program. Um, we have, uh, you know, it's like one of those portal things. So you have the weekly modules, um, you get, it's a step-by-step -step process that I have created with love from my heart, um, that, you know, it's love, learn to love yourself, heal your relationship to food and the generational trauma around that. Um, and then learn to trust yourself. Mm. With food. So that's, that's big. Yes. And interestingly, also another side note is that what I see a lot out there is that a lot of binge eating or coaches in general just do the trust part. So meaning um, mindful eating, intuitive eating. Right. And I've had so many clients come and tell me, oh, you know, I've tried intuitive eating. I tried this. Right. But you can't become an intuitive or I call it peaceful eater until you've healed your relationship to food. So I really, you know, the, the steps are there for a reason in that order. That's amazing. I had a client once who we tried the intuitive eating and I got the book and I was working with her and we got to the point where it was about having red light foods in your environment. And I, I, and now that you're saying this, it makes total sense. I was like, you know what? I'll do it too. I know the food that I used to just like once in a while get at the grocery when I was in Weight Watchers and eat them all really fast and then throw them away. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. And I was able to, I was able to buy and because the big thing, they were cookies, a specific cookie. And the big thing was I was willing to share it with my kids because that was, I was like, no, these are my cookies. She wouldn't do it. And now that you're saying that, I realized I had was farther along in my healing process, even though I didn't really recognize that at the time. So I was able to do it. She was not. This was, she, and she was fighting this. She felt like she had to fight to get to the weight loss that she wanted and so forth. So that is really fascinating and very important. Absolutely. It's really something that I think when people see that in the peace process, they're like, oh, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of pieces just start making sense. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, so it's, it's, it's a healing journey, basically, that we set, set ourselves up on. Um. And you get so much support as well, which, which I love that I've really set it up in a way that women feel supported. And I think, you know, I've spoken to Carrie about this so much is that, a lot of us women don't have support in our lives. Yeah. And so the peace process, because it's not really about the food at the, in the end, um, it's about support and love and, and, and healing. And when we come together in these groups, every week I get goosebumps to be on these calls because it, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to get together and heal in a community of women who love you and care about you and relate to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, this leads really well to my next question, which is you, you know, I don't think you do it enough probably, but you share some really beautiful testimonials um, and they're so touching. And I bet you it really lands for people like, oh, wow, there's some real signs that this could work for me too. So are there any that stand out for you that you could share with us among the many women you've helped find peace and freedom? Yeah, I was going to say there's so many. I, I really get a lot of emails, messages from these ladies in the community Every, every day I get a new message. Um, but one the other day did stand out and we're going to call her Jenny. Um, but Jenny is, is somebody who really related to the good girl trauma. And when she saw my videos, you know, obviously she, she reached out and what she realized uh, at the end of the day is that all of her binge eating and emotional eating patterns were coming from not being able to say no in her life. Hmm. And all of that, again, came from childhood. And, and it's interesting that she never realized that until, you know, she saw the videos and started putting two and two together. And, you know, like most clients who, who do the peace process, they start to notice these things early on because in the first month you get tons and, you know, it's packed full of um, insights. And naturally, right, within, I would say, two months, she started to just realize that her pants were getting you know, looser. And she's like, you know, how does this happen? Right. That she's like, I have been on diets my entire life and now I've done nothing with food, but suddenly my pants feel looser and I feel great. Right. So yeah, just an example, but, uh, it's just amazing to get these, these kind of messages daily. <laughs> well, that feels like that's a, there's a release there that when we release other things, pain, weight, whatever also gets released 
right? Absolutely. And, and, and she wasn't even, <laughs> the funny thing is that she was not even in the heal part yet. She had not even started to heal, but because in the first couple of months of the, cause it's a four month program in the first couple of months, we really address putting yourself first and all these things and starting that, um, before actually starting the healing. And so without even getting there yet, she already started to put herself first in her life. She started to stand up for herself and have a voice. Um, and so just imagine what's going to happen with her when she gets to the heel part. <laughs> well, I love that though, because I love the the baby step of it, right? The put yourself first. And so then by the time you're in the healing, which I can imagine might bring up a lot, you've already got a sort of solid base of standing up for yourself and speaking and, and advocating so that the healing piece maybe accelerates a little bit. Is that my, is that true? Absolutely. Uh, I think there's, there's, you know, for some people, the healing part is intimidating, right? Oh, that, I bet. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh God, I, I have to do this now. I actually have to dig deep, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's set up in a way that you get a lot of wins before mm. you get to that part because, you know, mm -hmm. that's daunting, right? Getting to the heal part, you haven't gotten anything yet. I mean, yes. It, yeah. Well, and oh my also, God, this sounds amazing. The healing thing, <laughs> <Join> is, <us. laughs> the healing thing isn't like one day. It's like a, it's the beginning of like an ongoing process. Right. So it's not like you heal and you're like, all done. It's no. a, it's a practice. And um, Lisa's heard me say this too much lately, probably, but it's just this realization that you can't heal until you feel mm. good girls and people pleasers are really like, you know, suppressing feelings. And yeah, so mm -hmm. this is, so beautiful this setting that you do people renew oh my goodness yes we have yeah. an, an alumni program we have lots of supports and i've i've made it in a way that you get lifetime access to the coaching at some point i mean which is mm -hmm. crazy because we all need that right we all need that support um so i wanted it to be super accessible to to everybody but yeah um the idea is that you you healing is a journey right the idea is not to be like all right, like you said, like I'm done, but that layers upon layers, it's like an onion, right? You're peeling and peeling. Oh my gosh, there's more. It doesn't mean you're, doesn't mean you haven't made progress, right? but it means that you're, you're on that journey and you're, I'm still healing. I mean, right. Thanks. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> you know, I think the, the term being on a journey can be sound like cliche, but when it comes to healing, it just is. We're never, I mean, I use this again, I used to say this as a Weight Watcher leader, like we're never fixed. We're never done. You know, this is, you, you learn some things, you integrate it, and then you got to come back and learn a few more. And this is really meant to be an ongoing process for the rest of your life. And if you look at it from a joyful place, that doesn't feel daunting. No, no, it, it definitely. I think if you think of it as like, oh my gosh, I have all this work to do, right? Um, instead, we we look at it as, you know, peeling back the layers to your true authentic self, really. Mm -hmm. It's really what it is. We want to we want to come out and 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 I love seeing, you know, just the journey of of my clients that when they first come to me and I, you know, I coach this person, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see her. And, you know, some of them have become coaches for me, like they're oh, actually cool. coaching. And so it's amazing the way that they completely um, shine you know, oh, through the program. Yeah. I'd love that. I, I would love for you to say a little bit more, because quite frankly, uh, I love the, the phrase, good girl pattern, good girl trauma, but I had never heard that before. So tell me a little bit more on how you honed in on this. Cause I, I'm guessing most people have not heard this. I like to say I made it up. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know, quite frankly, I think you did. So I trademark it. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, 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 I've, I've heard about, you know, good girl conditioning. I've yeah. seen you know, uh, good girl syndrome, but the mm -hmm. way that I see it is that it truly is a, a traumatic experience to go, you know, from being uh, a girl who was raised to be this polite, perfect, you know, don't talk about, you know, don't talk about emotions, girl. Um, and that, and that, you know, through your journey in life, you realize that you are this good girl. I don't think a lot of people realize they are a good girl. So right. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but for me, um, I just realized that it's a traumatic thing to go through. And I'm like, this is good girl trauma. I know. I think that's, I love that. And I think you're exactly right. It's, it's, I, I, I always hone back to the idea of, you know, when we're born as, as girls, we're little and we sort of have the same biology as a boy in terms of, 
we're risk takers and we get out there, we get to, and then we hit puberty. And that's when we start paying outward attention and we start, we, you know, estrogen goes up, testosterone goes down. So we stop becoming risk takers. And, and so that's when that stuff can really impact you. Um, you know, we're weak if we cry, all those things that we're not supposed to do that it's just human behavior. And you're, and again, it's the microaggressions and the sort of like picking at that is, that causes the trauma. It's not a big experience in one fail swoop. It's the little tiny things that you don't see happening. And all of a sudden you're there, all of a sudden you're binge eating, all of a sudden you're emotionally eating, you're drinking, you're shopping, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Or a combination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or all of the above. <laughs> And, but, and and the thing is, is that I, I totally agree. And I also think that society plays such a big role in this mm-hmm. that, you know, when I think what I, when I realized it is more when I became, you know, an adult mm-hmm. that, you know, this good girl trauma is again, not to blame, but it's, it's a society expectation of women to look a certain way, to be a certain way, to speak a certain way, Right. Yeah. Um, like we're not even supposed to speak or at, at some point, you know, in, in the, in the eighties and nineties, you weren't supposed to like speak super loudly, right? Like you're supposed to be like soft and gentle. Didn't work for me. <laughs> me either. <laughs> yeah, and eventually, sure. right. That has to come out Just somewhere. Be less, yeah. be less. Yeah. Be, be less. Small. smaller. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting because m- my son, um, I think is, you know, I talk a lot, a lot about this with Carrie is the version of me as a boy that I think I never allowed myself to be yep. because, and I think that's so triggering that I'm like, and sometimes, and you know, uh, as difficult as this is for me to say is sometimes I'm like, why is he like that? Right. And I think it's because I get triggered by that, yeah. that I could never be this loud and be that, you know, ah, right. Cause as, as girls, we're not supposed to. Right. Mm, yeah. Such a good point. Oh yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole, that's a whole yeah, other whole other we should, we should all come back on that one. Um, we haven't said that in a while. We usually do that. I know we <laughs> say, we, we almost every pod we're like, there's another one. We have another topic. Um, I love that you provide community so that people aren't isolated and yet you have this really great way of taking people, you know, like they, they can take themselves through and then show up for this community, which I just love because it is so much easier to feel seen and heard when you're in a community for people listening right now who aren't yet who don't yet know how to access that and we'll get to that um do you have tips because I feel like you also even though we talked about there's a lot of avoidant tips out there you have some really good presencing tips because everything you and Lisa were just discussing really is just inviting people into presence with themselves what do I need what do I feel Mm -hmm. what's true like what can't I change and move forward with um so you know like I know you've you've kind of mentioned tapping and breathing. Can you just share for someone listening, like what what are some tips that really do help people be more present with themselves? Absolutely. I definitely think uh, breath work for me has been life-changing. And I, and I think that it's something that um, helps us with anxiety, which something, you know, something definitely I struggle with Um, anxiety, uh, depression, you know, all these feelings that we're not supposed to have, or we don't feel safe to have because we weren't allowed to have them um, is, is something that breath work can really help change and not just change, but accept, right? Like I can accept the way that I'm feeling so that I can release this feeling. Um, so that for me is is number one, uh, something else that I think that can help as well with food is to be able to, when you have that urge to, to, to grab, you know, the box of cookies, like I used to eat a whole box of cookies. Um, when you have that urge is not to think that it's about the cookies, right? So that, you know, step back and okay, so what is it that I'm actually trying to, to comfort myself about, or what is it that I'm trying to avoid by using this food and just kind of get, start to get into that mindset of it's not about the food, right? What is it? Mm. Right. Is it an emotion? And underneath that emotion, there's a need a little bit more complicated, but just start with that. Yeah. That's yeah I love that. All right. So it's the fun part of the, well, all of this has been fun. Let's be clear. But 
I know Carrie told you that we'd love to feature a favorite song on our playlist. And I saw what one you're picking. I'm so excited because we've been adding these. We've already got our season two. It's tiny because we don't have as many interviews out there yet. But um, I would love for you to share the one you have from Guns N' Roses. Oh, my goodness. It's so funny because when Carrie asked me this, I'm like, I don't know if I have a favorite song, you know, and I realized I was like, avoid it. <laughs> Typical. Um, but I realized, you know, there's this part of me who I, I, my old self, I was a performer. I used to sing and I used to be in a rock band and it was so much fun. And my favorite song was Guns N' Roses, um, Sweet Child of Mine. And as one. I was speaking to Carrie, I had this revelation. I'm like, wait a second. These lyrics are speaking to me. I think it's about my daughter. Maybe I didn't know I was going to have a daughter back then, but this is like perfect. Sweet Child of Mine. Um, okay. So I actually wrote it down because I definitely have zero brains right now. Oh yeah. She's got <laughs> okay. But you guys got to sing it with me. Do you guys remember? Oh, I'm not singing. I'll, I'll, hell sing no. with you. I'll sing it with you. Hell no. <clears throat> okay. Ready? All right. You've got a smile that it seems to me reminds me of childhood memories where everything was as fresh as the bright blue sky. Now and then when I see her face, what is it? She takes me away to that That's special place. place. <laughs> and if I stare too long, I'd probably break down and cry. Oh, 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 oh sweet child. I mean, it might be for your daughter, but don't you think it's also for your younger self? That, yeah. Oh my gosh, goosebumps. goosebumps. I mean, that's the that's the little girl that you never got to really be. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, I you know we all need coaches, right? You all need, yeah. you need somebody to like stick it back in front of you, like this right. is what it is. This is what. Right. Oh, I love that. I so, mean, it's both, right? The funny, it's thing, yes and. the funny thing about Zoom is that like only one person's audio can go at the same time, so who knows? <laughs> we cut each other out. That's gonna be funny. I love oh, that. I was. You know, this is my ringtone for my oldest. Oh, that's cute. Um, I almost never have my phone on, but when I do, it cracks me up because like, it'll just like that opening riff and it's just one of my absolute favorite songs too. So I love that it's yours. Gosh, I love that. I love that. Um, It's like my, my karaoke song. Yes. Well, you have a beautiful voice. Oh, <laughs> that, that was my karaoke voice. It's fine. <laughs> well, you're, that's a good karaoke right. you, voice. You don't want to be too skilled for karaoke. That's no fun. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, for having me. Well, yeah. do you have any final thoughts or just little nugget that you'd like to send our listeners off with? Um, you know, first of all, watch my videos. <laughs> for sure. Can you say it? I mean, we'll have it all in there, but for yeah. those that yeah. might just be listening, what where where do we follow you on TikTok? So um I'll send you guys my link for sure, but TikTok, mm -hmm. I'm Coach Samah B. Okay. Um, Instagram, um, Samah Babaki coaching, but it's, it's complicated because my name is complicated. So. <laughs> oh, all the links well, will be we'll in the show notes, out. but okay. it's yeah. specifically TikTok. Cause it sounds like that's the place where all the really fun stuff is, is coach Samah B. Yes. Like B as in boy. Okay, cool. Right. Yeah. I'm going to follow um, you as soon as we get done. Follow me there. Um, I have daily videos, daily inspirations and content and relatable awesome. stuff. So yeah. I love Thanks, it. Thank you one of my favorite things um thank you so much for doing this because I you know it, it it like Lisa and I've been there new baby time it's like oh but I, I feel like this was so important I'm so glad you let us pull you away from your work and your baby and your son to do this um yeah, and like Lisa said you can find links to all of her um content and her program and her work in the show notes um, on Instagram, Facebook, and, and, and our, we'll probably, you know, the week that this is airing, um, we'll, we'll be sharing links to it and maybe resharing some of your videos. So be sure to check out our reels or TikToks, um, reels for us middle-aged women who watch TikToks later. Yeah. Like two, hours, <laughs> two, two months later. And then we go and tell our kids and they're like, mom. Yes. And, and <laughs> mom's and just, done that. <laughs> mom's just a singer. You, you can tell she has acting chops. I love um, that. Yeah. yeah. Right. All That's right. Awesome. Well, awesome. thanks everyone for listening. Thanks, Sama, for being here. It has just been an absolute pleasure. I absolutely feel like this is a, a pod that could have gone on for about two hours had we allowed it. 
Um, but if you found this episode inspiring, which I can't imagine you didn't, please consider sharing it with a friend. Uh, look into Samaz's programs. If you were like, hmm, that sounds like me. She is the perfect person to coach you through this. So I thank you so much as always for being here. Thank you so much, ladies, for having me. It's been awesome. Awesome. Every, well, thank you, Samal. I'll see you soon. And everyone else, we'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. So Bye. Long.